This is the news load. Hi, I'm Carrie Ann Stevenson, and we're here with News Load today, and I am so excited to be able to interview Scott Falconbridge. Hello, Scott. How are you today? Good. How are you doing? I'm amazing. It's a beautiful day. I'm uh, absolutely delighted to ask you all sorts of questions. And my first one is, where were you born? Actually, I was born in uh, Montreal, Quebec, a um, long, long time ago. Uh, in uh, it, basically a small hospital in downtown Montreal. Wow, wow. So do you speak French? So I'm like functionally bilingual, but my French wasn't great. When I would improvise in French, I usually played the dumb Anglo because I didn't really understand what was going on, but I do have like basic French. Cool, cool. And do you have siblings? Yep, I do. Uh, my um, my sister Janice, four years younger. Um, and uh, yeah, um, it's, uh, it's just us and my mom. Um, and... Uh, that's that's it. So you were the protective older brother, but funny. Yeah, I I think so. I, I I think I broke a kid's collarbone when I was eleven, getting into a fight, um, like uh, protecting my sister. Yeah, I know that it's it's really not who I am. But uh, I I did I I was scrappy as a kid. Wow, that's kind of fun. And is your mom funny? No, she doesn't even like to be in front of people. <laughs> she's she's very shy. She was a teacher and she liked doing that, but she she does not like crowds. She doesn't like, you know, she that's just not her thing. Uh, and she always says, I don't know where you got that from. Um, so no, my, my mom is not what you'd call funny. Well, maybe it's a self-defense mechanism uh, to, to avoid being so scrappy. Uh, probably. Also... She like she's funny to us. She she does a lot of mom things we find funny. I don't know if it's like uh, stage funny, but uh, she she just like calls you to ask questions that she knows you know the answer to, uh, that type of thing. Huh. Uh, you know, um, like we you, she she'll call and ask a question. We don't know why she called because it's something like, "Is it thirty seven degrees today?" It's like, "Yes, it's thirty seven degrees today." She goes, oh, "Okay," so. Uh, that's what she's like. Just to confirm, you know, that she's right. As a teacher, you always want to be right, right? She always confirms everything. Yeah. Oh, oh and to make sure we have enough potatoes. We get a lot of those calls. Okay. Okay. Well, potatoes are delicious and, you know, like multifunctional. Uh, I just uh, discovered a new recipe of twice baked potato, and then you throw an egg on top of it for breakfast, which I'm like, okay. That's very, is that one of those like recipes you see people do in like two minutes on the internet? You know what I mean? Where they compile a video and they show you how to like make a, a weird like breakfast you've never heard before. Is that one of those recipes? Which I love because I like being shown how to do it. And then in, right. it's like, it's like food porn, literally, you know, where you're shown how to do it. And it's like, that's never going to happen. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, usually there's like 16 layers to the thing with this guy like an egg and a sausage and it's wrapped in bacon and then wrapped in bacon and then they put inside the chicken and then they broil like it's it's got many dimensions to it that you know you wouldn't uh normally have time to do it's so fabulous and 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 terrible for any uh weight loss do you do you find uh eating on the road is difficult because you're so slim um i i do find it uh difficult especially as you get older because you basically, as you age, you trust less and less food. Um, and, you know, there's more and more things you like, I can't eat that anymore. I can't eat that anymore. Like when you're 20, you could eat rocks and it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I'm 57 years old. So uh, there's a, like, you know, basically I, I live on either Subway, um, or basically Subway, nothing else. Well, Subway is reliable and consistent, you know? Yeah. And, you know, you can actually, you can actually order a veggie sandwich, which is the only thing I trust my body with these days. So, uh, like you keep it real simple. Um, and, uh, I stay away from, you know, um, all the famous, famous burger joints. 
Yes, and uh, I I can't eat um, gas station uh, hot dogs anymore. No, and you probably should never have done that. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, no, the uh, food in a gas station uh, terrifies me. Except maybe you know, like a like a Slurpee and and you know a bag of chips. Right. If you if you need that like old fashioned processed food and you just need to like fuel up and it's like the, the next hour you're going to like erase from your memory because you don't want to remember that you ate that food, then yeah, you can get things like that for sure. <laughs> so I saw on your Facebook that you're doing a YouTube show, The Bar with my darling Jason Allen. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, actually, uh, The Bar is a sketch uh, with, uh, within a larger show that we we, we shot in the last year for Bell 5 TV one, it's called Falkenbridge is falling down. And Jason did a couple of our sketches. He was in our pool party sketch. He was in the bar sketch. Um, and I basically use a lot of Hamilton talent. And, you know, we made a, we made a sketch show for probably way less than you normally would. And we had a lot of fun doing it. Jason has Pantene pro V hair. That, that boy is so beautiful. Pantene Pro V, like yeah, you know, like just shimmering. Oh, for his hair, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, I'm a little jealous. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't really normally like to talk about hair, um, and it's probably one of the things I resent the most about Jason Allen is uh, him and his like golden shiny lock of hair. But um, he, I mean, he's a pretty good guy. Uh, he's such a beautiful guy. Viking. He is a beautiful Viking. Um, and uh, he did a really great job on our sketch. Uh, also in, in bar in particular, he was great in that. So the, the greatest game ever played was Shia LaBeouf. What was that like? Uh, that was 16 days of Disney mayhem. Uh, yeah, that was uh, a, a lot of uh, shoots on a like outdoors uh some days it was raining um and uh the guy who was actually the, the guy who directed that was uh, the um uh actor bill uh, paxton he was actually the director of that like yeah there were like famous people everywhere on that and that was his first that was his directorial debut um so he was probably the most famous actor on the set even though he wasn't in the film at that time shia was like um i think that was his first feature film so he you know he um he i think he'd done holes but i i don't i think this was his first like adult uh feature where he's like the main player and it was a lot of british actors because they had a huge cast you know like they had brits playing all the british golfers and they had americans uh playing all the americans and um, uh, it, it, it was a big, big shoot and a big, big production. Um, it was a lot, lot, lot of fun to do. I learned a lot just being on the set. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And, uh, abandon with Benjamin Bratt. So that was kind of my first actual, like serious little thing I ever did. Um, and it was with Benjamin Bratt and he, uh, he was a, he was great to work with. He was just, uh, really quiet non-assuming and really good with like back and forth it was fun and he's beautiful and he used to date julia roberts yo know, he was dating julia roberts at the time um that that, that we shot that was obviously uh, a long time ago but um uh, i you know i i don't know much about that but uh he um he was often uh there for, like for me as an actor it was really cool oh that's amazing because yeah. he knew um, i was that was my first time have you uh had any struggles with uh unprofessional comics or anything you don't have to name names but just a situation oh my gosh uh <laughs> wait till the book comes out um yeah, uh, of of course I have, and you know you you can't spend thirty years doing comedy and not having those experiences. Uh, the one I can mention without naming names is I was I was doing a, a show one time. It was a just like a show on the road, 
And I had just started to make some TV appearances. So things were going okay. And there was a knock on the door and it was the headliner of the show, a, a guy whose name I can mention, Greg Morton, great guy. And uh, I think, I think he recently placed high in like uh, America's got talent. Like he's really funny and nice guy. And he said, listen, uh, the MC of the show doesn't like you. It's not your fault. Uh, he, he's just resentful. And uh, when you encounter it, just don't worry about it. Just be cool about it. And I went, okay. I didn't, you know, I didn't really know what was going on. I was pretty young. And I went on and I got, I got introduced um, when he, the, the MC introduced me. He said, your next act is, uh, uh, they say he's pretty funny, but he's not as funny as I am. Um, and uh, he went on to describe why some of his bits were funnier than my bits. And then he introduced me. That's how I came out. Um, and uh, like that, that was uh, probably one of the, the funniest things. Like I literally got introduced as an act that's less funny than than he was, uh, but because Greg had said something to me, it, it didn't phase me at all. It's wonderful to have been prepared. And how yeah. how did you yeah. how did you do? Did they laugh? Did you do a good show still? I spent about five minutes talking about how unfunny I was compared to the rest of the show, which the audience loved because audiences are pretty smart and they realize when something's wrong. So when I was intro that way, it didn't seem right to anybody. And I just had fun with it and moved on. That's really cool. And taking it in stride. I really like that. Yeah, I was, to be honest, I don't think I would have done it as well had Greg not said anything. Yeah. Being prepared for it is definitely instead of just being, you know, like, like just surprised, like, oh my God, this guy thinks I suck. That's weird. Uh, but, you know, improv. <laughs> Improv, yeah. Thank God for improv, right? Um, have you ever been starstruck? When am I not starstruck? Um, yeah, I, I, uh, sure, I, I have. I think I'm. I'm just trying to. I probably my like I mentioned my first couple times on a movie set. Um, like I was very aware that I was doing a scene with Benjamin Bratt. <laughs> um, I, I on, when I did Greatest Game, uh, I'm more starstruck with 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 Bill probably because I, I I didn't really know who Shia was to be honest with you, um, and, and you know as a comedian there have been a couple times uh, when I met Bill Maher and worked with Bill Maher, um, uh, I I probably have the advantage of knowing a lot of people before they were famous, so you don't really get starstruck. You know, like I did shows with um, Ray Romano, and Joe Rogan, and Bill Burr at different times. Um, but in those days, like they were just, you know, it was just like Bill or Joe. Like it wasn't, they, they weren't who they are now, I guess. That's really, really cool. Um, the Hall of Fame. How are you involved in that? Uh, I'm just helping them make some decisions about um who they're going to program and how they're going to program I'm more of a like consultant you know to help out and I think it's a good thing to have I think it's it's you know good for Canadian comedy it, it's not something that uh I do a lot of just because they've they've got their own uh people for that but I'm, I, I guess I'm a useful source of information uh just because I've been around a while and honoring uh, Joanna Downey, who is a, I'm a huge fan of. Uh, did you have any part in making those decisions? Well, I mean, that, that was the voter's choice, you know. Uh, but on a side note, um, I went to school with Joanna Downey um, way back when. Uh, I, I went to Marianapolis College in Montreal. And uh, when I was when I was there, I was on the rugby team and one day we played against the girls rugby team and uh, I, we were playing and then I, I got tackled all of a sudden from behind and, and whoever tackled me rolled me around the ground, just started laughing, hysterical, this very distinct laugh. And if anyone knew Joanna Downey, she had this very distinct, I, I, I looked down and, and she was like looking at me, grinning, laughing at her you know, ass off. And, and that's how I met Joanna Downey. Um, 
she tackled me on a rugby field. This is That's years amazing. before either of us are doing comedy. That's an amazing story. And, she, uh, yeah. she was such a beautiful woman. Uh, were you able to perform with her a lot? Yeah. Well, so, I mean, I was around a bit when uh, she started doing comedy. She would uh, show up at the, um, uh, the Yucks when I was headlining. She was always like, uh, she helped me out with a place to stay. We were like old friends. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I knew her quite well. And when, uh, uh, when she got, when she got sick, I was around a bit. Um, and, you know, unfortunately it was a pretty quick decline, but, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I knew, I knew Joanna pretty well. Uh, yeah, she was a beautiful woman and I'm so glad that she's getting honored in the hall of fame. And, uh, yeah. Um, are you going to be touring much this summer? Uh, yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like we'll be doing, uh, a, a Northern Ontario tour called three guys walk into a bear. Um, and, uh, I have plans for more like theaters in the fall, which probably out West, um, looking at shooting a second season of the show, uh falcon bridge is falling down uh with jason and his shiny hair will probably make another appearance and uh yeah lo like just a lot a lot of different things for sure amazing amazing is uh there anything you want the audience to know right now about what's going on check out your youtube channels and such oh i check out my new website it's got falconbridge.com which has a link to my youtube channel where we have all the falcon bridges falling down sketches and you can check out both those things for new announcements um, as we just do more and more shows. I do want to also mention that another inductee uh, to the Hall of Fame is a guy named Joe Bodelai, who um, gave me my, my start um, in many ways in television and was incredibly supportive. And, uh, I'm, you know, I, I, Joe is someone I also uh, miss tremendously. So two people I knew, two people I knew being inducted this year. Um, so I'm I'm pretty happy about that. I'm really excited about, you know, some of the appearances, like hopefully Eugene Levy can attend and Martin Short. Mm -hmm. Some pretty amazing people. Yeah, there's there's definitely like, you know, big names that are uh, a, a part of it. So um, I, I hope that, you know, gives people a reason to come on down. It should be great. Cool, cool. Well, uh, Scott, I can't thank you enough for your time. And uh, I think that you're absolutely hilarious. And I'm so excited to watch your, uh, your, your bar uh, episode. I believe it just launched today. Yeah, it was just uh, launched yesterday at noon, every Tuesday at noon. Um, and then people can go on the YouTube channel and, and check out, like, I think so far we've released 17 sketches. So amazing amazing and if i could just ask you one more thing if you can say it loud say it proud i love newsload i love newsload <laughs> is that is that is that too weird is that what no it was I, perfect do, do you want it like i love newsload like a little bit more <laughs> like you know wait, is it better from the side if i i love newsload <laughs> That, that was way out of, that was weird. Wait, let me do it. Hey guys, I love Newsload. <laughs> I love I, all of them. We'll use all those takes. It'll be amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, I guess you don't edit this, right? No. <laughs> what am I going to do? It's going to be I'm great. Sorry. It's going to be I'm great. Such a <laughs> Thank you so much, Scott. I'm so grateful for your time, and I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you. You too. Thanks for having me. This is the Newsload.